Good afternoon, everyone. Pastor David, good afternoon. Hey, John. We're here again with Unfiltered. And uh, on Sunday, Pastor, you were mentioning some things in your, uh, in your message that was stirring people up. They were responding. Our, our congregation was responding. And you were bringing up how has the church been muzzled by the world? And you, uh, you were sharing about how recently a brewery celebrated uh, or wanted to celebrate a man who is now considers itself a woman and how the offense that is to women and how the church has allowed this self-delusion that has crept in that has been more important than reality. There's these delusions that are now that the church seems like it's buying into. And so does the church have a responsibility to speak up for these things or do we remain muzzled? You know, we have people who will say that you're unloving if you point out the obvious. You're unloving because you have said things that are unkind and hurt people's feelings. And, uh, and, and many of us sincerely want to be gracious and loving. And see, so part of the problem, I think sometimes for me and probably for others, John, is you want to speak the truth. But at the same time, you want to love people as you do so. And Paul said, you know, speak the truth in love. And so that's difficult. It's, it's difficult for the believer to step into areas that have actually been, been uh, seeded with landmines mm -hmm. by the <laughs> secular world. Because you know, and I know, that the secular world can use phrases and terms and get away with it. It's the conservative or the Christian that if using the same words will be castigated mm. for it. So you can have someone who represents, we'll say, liberalism and uh, you know, even further to the left than the average liberal. We have uh, Biden who believes that he can say to somebody, for example, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. And nobody responds. The people who voice their opinions on his behalf have a tendency of defending his speech by saying that this is a person who has a track record of really caring and loving uh, and all of that for minorities. And even though much of what he has to say in the past in his votes when he was a senator demonstrates the exact opposite. And so we have been told by, by those who tell you what to do we have been told you need to be quiet and allow people to be what they are because after all, in allowing them to find their true self, you're loving them. Mm. Is that the truth? Well, they, they wouldn't know because they don't, they don't believe the Bible is truth. They don't believe the Bible is God's word. And so they don't read it. And because they, the world, don't read it, they have a tendency, and we know this, I'm generalizing, but not really that much. Um, to say that you're not to judge lest you be judged, right? And so they, they don't know the context of that because <laughs> Jesus had just said, don't cast your pearls mm -hmm. before swine. <laughs> I mean, isn't that sounding rather judgmental? Um, and so on the one hand, he's, he's saying that in the same context um, of when it comes to the point of, of making words or uh, giving us words concerning judgment. And so they don't take context at all. So this person whom the scriptures say is love incarnate, God is love. Jesus is God in the flesh. Therefore, Jesus is a loving God, walking amongst men and loving them to the very end. This is Jesus. And yet he, in Matthew chapter 23, excoriates the religious leaders and, and speaks to them and calls them by some pretty bad, you know, uh, identifications in your whitewashed tomb and things of that nature. And so that's because they don't understand, the world doesn't understand that part of the responsibility and a huge part of it is for us as believers to communicate, to communicate what is true. And you do that as you proclaim the gospel and live according to the standards of the word to, to the best of your ability as God gives you strength to. And so, was, is it loving for me to, to, um, to yield to the delusions 
of somebody who quite obviously has uh, some very, very deep problems and, and great troubles. Is it, is, it, is it loving for me to say, you're a man, you've, you have a beard, but you want to call yourself Phyllis and that's okay? Um, is that, that love, John? It, it isn't love. And so we're not loving our neighbor when we don't love them enough to tell them the truth. And so on Sunday, I was sharing that because the church has become silent, not the whole church, there are pockets of people who are willing to speak the truth, but um, sometimes in the manner in which the truth is spoken and the way that the same thing is said in various ways, you produce an angry congregation of people who really do point fingers, who really do offend people because they have been made into a militant, angry Christians. And so on the one hand, we have those who say, don't say anything because it's more loving. On the other hand, you have people that people like me have to give explanation for because they are so abrasive and so unloving in the way they speak. And so it's tough. And there are people who are saying it's just safer for us to to get along, but in fact, uh, it's not safer for the person's soul that right. that we don't um, that we are afraid to tell the truth to. So yeah, on Sunday, I was sharing about that, and and I believe that I really do think that the the great challenge right now is being presented by the transgender uh, quote unquote movement. I do. I think that what is happening is a redefinition of humanity right. right before our eyes. And as a result of that, people are silenced. And so I, I, I think that we need to uh, be aware of the fact that just because a man calls himself by a woman's name or just because a man puts on a dress or a woman dresses like a man for that matter, and though they may have surgeries to try to physically um, make them appear, the fact is there's still an XY and an XX, and, <laughs> and the fact is is that no man, regardless of whether he has implants or, or has a transformation in his body to make him appear as a woman, no man, no man is ever going to have a baby. No man, he wasn't created in that way. And uh, for him to think that he's a mother because he feels like he's been a mother, I think is a terrible insult to women. And for him to say he's a woman and understands their pain, that truly is a, uh, a, mental, a mental problem that needs to be dealt with. It's a self-assessment that is rooted in uh, self-deception and is also uh, tragic. And what we have is we have a nation that is filled with this confusion so that the biggest movement, it seems to be, is to accept all sin in all forms of, of deviance. And, and if you don't do that, you're not enlightened when in fact that's as pagan as it gets. Right, right. Because uh, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 makes it very clear. And he makes it very clear that these kinds of transformations that they're having in terms of their affections, woman for woman, man for man, are really aberrational and in fact <laughs> are placing them in a position of, uh, of uh, denying the reality of God and His creation. Right. And I mean, Scripture is fairly clear about that, as a matter of fact, very clear about that. And, and so, yeah, I spoke about that. And I think sometimes the church wants to hear somebody say that just to reinforce what they know is true and they want to hear their pastor say that. I, I saw that. You saw that this Sunday. Uh, I, I am not a person who wants to be the uh, tip of the spear. I, I'm not going to go and put on a military uniform and jump on a horse and lead people off to fight the unbelievers. We're not in, in days that that is what we're called for. But I do know that, that my people need to be instructed and need to open their mouths, Amen. you know. And that's what I try to encourage on Sunday. And it was well a message well received. The we as the church responded, and, it, and it's time to st that we stand up and not be silenced yeah. by the the possibilities of being canceled or yeah. the threats of this. You know, we have we have God's word, and so thank you, Pastor. I just wanted to 
uh, get some feedback from you on that because it was a, for me, and not that we're stirred any emotions, it was a, a point in the message that just kind of tied everything in. You even used the illustration about the island, which was a, a great illustration. If you haven't seen the message, you can actually go back to our Facebook page or our YouTube page and catch last Sunday's message. And so I would modify that, and I'll say it quickly and we'll close. I w I've been thinking about that illustration. I would modify it a bit were I to do it again, and I'll <laughs> tell you why. Because I said that if you have a man and a woman and they're on an island and they're left there and they're of uh, childbearing age and capacity, that if you were to return uh, to the island in a hundred years, you would find an island that's populated with people there because they can procreate. But if you have a transgendered man who appears as a woman and, and a, a man who is a uh, biological male, uh, you come back in a hundred years, you're going to find two male skeletons. And I was pointing that out. I, I, I would do this, and I'll close with this very briefly, because it's funny that you'd say that, because I have thought over and over again. I would, I would change that illustration to say, if you had a group of women and a group of men, uh, why? Hmm. Because the hmm. inbreeding would create, <laughs> would have created, um, you know, some physical um, handicaps. And but the point I was making was a simple one, and hopefully it was taken for what it was intended to communicate, which is, men can have uh, physical relations with a woman, and when they both have the capacity to be able to uh, impregnate or become pregnant. That's the point I was trying to make. But I thought it through, and I thought, well, I probably should have said a few couples, you know? <laughs> I, I Honestly, I didn't even take, think of that. I just thought about the concept of the ability to procreate mm -hmm. versus no. That was not my be, point. Yes, and but so. <laughs> I just wanted to be clear. I should have been clear about that. Well, you can still go back and check out the yeah, message. Keep that in uh, mind. Tomorrow we have uh, a study in Romans that you're teaching Chapter a study. Three. And then we have communion afterwards. Yes, we do. It's always a great time that we can get together, worship the Lord, get in the Word, and celebrate Amen. communion together. Our services are at 7 p.m. and then on Sunday, 8.30 and 10.45, taking us through the book of Mark. Yeah. And it's an exciting time. Come join us. These are fascinating times that we're living in. It's nothing better than being equipped by Amen. God's Word. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you.